Hey everyone, welcome to another video in the ML.NET end-to-end series here. And in this video, I'm going to show how to deploy the API, which we have pulled up here, and then also the Blazor client uh, or web app that we did in the last video. And deployment is going to be pretty easy, actually. In fact, we can go ahead and actually deploy this by right-clicking on the project and then click Publish. And I'm going to deploy on Azure here. And I'll just keep it as a Windows app service. And I'm going to create a new app service here just to show. And put a resource group. And I really need to clean up my resource groups here. Let's see. All right, I'll create a new hosting plan as well. And I'll do the free one. So that got created, so I'll click finish here. It's gonna give some final details here and create a publish profile for me. And I can just hit publish. There you go, so it said build succeeded and publish succeeded. And in fact, it created this tab for me where we can see it created this Azure website for us. And that's pretty much all you need to do to publish. And if we wanna make some changes, we can just do the same thing, hit publish, it saves this profile for us. So it'll just overwrite everything that we that we did. And in fact, there are some changes that I actually wanna do. Uh, first thing is I want to kind of get rid of this blob dependency here in the constructor of the controller so we don't have to load the model in here as well. And also I want to update my version of ML.net so you can see we did this a while back because this is pre-version 1 here. So let's go ahead and update this. And to remove that dependency from the blob storage here, I'm actually going to use the Microsoft.ml extensions. And that allows us to bring in that dependency via dependency injection. And what we can do now is we can do services dot add prediction engine pool and we do one data and one prediction is our input and output schemas and then from here I can either do from a file a model file that we already have but I'm going to do from URI and instead of just bringing down this dependency from blob storage and then downloading it ourselves we can actually pass in the URI of our model file, and it, it'll just get it by itself from there. Yeah. And we can get the URI from Azure Storage Explorer here, and we're using the one model here, and we just click on the properties, and right here we have our URI, and we just paste that in, and that's good to go. We're all done with that. And back in our controller, we actually don't need any of these anymore we go and I'm gonna do private read only prediction engine pool one data and one prediction it's gonna be a new field for us and I like to underline my private fields and then in our controller we can bring in the prediction engine pool as a dependency. And then we can set the field to the item from the constructor. We don't need this prediction engine creation and we can use this field, use this field for our prediction engine and call predict on that like we did before. And also as kind of a really small health check, I want to do uh, a git here, and I'll just return a string just to make sure everything's up and running. All right, with that, and I'm sure there's some there's some other cleaning up we can do. But I'm going to go ahead and deploy this back, these updates, and again we have everything saved, so we just hit publish. We got published was successful and we see we have our tab created here and let's see 
if our little health check works here. Sounds like it's not working here. And what we can do is we can run it locally and see what's going on. There we go, go to the model get. There we go. So we have an exception here, could not find assembly Microsoft ML fast tree. So what happened here is when we created our model, we used that fast tree algorithm. But since we updated to the new version of ML.net, that now does not the fast tree algorithm isn't included in it. So what we have to do is bring down the Microsoft ML.fast tree nuget package. There we go. And now we can redeploy from there. Let's build it real quick. Now also one thing to note of we are referencing this one common library here. When we publish on this project, it knows it has a dependency on this one common library. So it brings that in as well. All right, so that popped up here. So let's give this a try. There we go. So we get that working string back. So we know our API is up and running. Our API is deployed. Let's go to our Blazor app here. And before we deploy that, there's one thing we need to do. And that is, let's see, in our prediction service, we have our base address for where our API is. And what we can do is we can just take this URL, put that in there. Now we can right click and hit publish. And we get the same wizard that we did when publishing our API. So it's your, I do a Windows app service. Now I'll create another one. The same resource group and I'll create a new hosting plan. And I think you can only have one free one at a time. So I'll just do shared here. There that got created. So click finish. Our profile is created now and I'll hit publish. If you notice it's building in release mode here when we hit publish. All right, so our Blazor app just popped up and we see it's on, it was deployed onto Azure here. And we can go to it and you can see it's working just like we did locally in the past video. And I'll just do some kind of dummy values here. Click predict and there we go. Get a prediction and it's going to our API that we deployed just a, a bit earlier. All right, and that's it. And it was pretty easy to deploy thanks to the, the tools within Visual Studio here. Now we have a deployed API and web app here. All right, I think I'll end things there. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.